Welcome back to uh, FS Derek. I'm going to make this part two, I think, because the first I've just had a look at the first part and it's about 50 minutes long already, so which will take me about 10 hours to upload. So this is part two of our Edinburgh to South End flight, the descent, and just to show you where we are, roughly, we are 95 miles away, and I'm just going to show you, just demonstrate something briefly that we were referring to earlier about bearings and tracks and everything. If we go to the first page of the nav. The top one is set up with our flight plan and you can see we're on the Lake Pedig to DTY which I think is the Daventry VOR. The bottom one is set up direct to Mike Charlie which is our destination and if we compare the figures you can see a bit more clearly what they're doing. Here we've got 18 miles nautical miles to Daventry on that leg. Here we've got 92 miles to Mike Charlie, our destination. In both cases the ground speed's the same. In both cases the track is the same uh, because this is the track that the plane's flying but the desired track is slightly different. Here it's 148, we're flying 147 so that's, that's pretty well spot on. But it's saying that our desired track for the direct route is 143 and in fact you can you can see that uh, if you if we look at the next page I put them on 35 nautical mile resolution and here you can see in both cases the uh, airfield and the plane are the airfields and the plane are correct relative to each other but here you can see we're on track and here we're not so uh, what that's telling us is that we are to the right of the direct track so if we um, our direct track we would expect to be less than the track to Daventry because we would we will be flying more more this sort of direction and that um, shows itself up in the figures so here we are so the desired track is five degrees to the left um, that's because we're flying slightly round to the right in a bit of a big big loop and we're 18 minutes away two minutes away from the waypoint the bearing to the waypoint is 148 which is what we're flying which is fine but the bearing to uh, Mike Charlie is 122 so um, I don't know why it's telling us to fly maybe something to do with the wind but you'd expect the desired track to be the same as the bearing wouldn't you because if you're flying straight there but anyway we'll have to come back to that so um, I'm going to just set us up for the descent so, so let's stow these two away the first thing you do let's just check that but I don't want to descend too early so let's just check we're, we're 85 miles well, there's no mad rush Let's stow the coffee. No open beverages on the centre pedestal. So I better make sure that no one saw me put that open beverage on the centre pedestal. Oh, I'm drinking tomato soup. <clears throat> and you just cannot drink tomato soup without burning your mouth. So we're going to descend and we want to descend now the descent is the um, part of the flight as I said where you use absolutely no fuel at all. So what we can do we can wait until 80 miles out and then descend at 1500 or we can sort of start now and descend at 1200. It's not, obviously it depends on what your air traffic control has cleared you to do. Um, let's assume that we're cleared down to flight level 100. <clears throat> there we are. So you set that first, and then we need to go down to the well. Then now, power, power, attitude, trim. Do you remember on the descent? It's attitude, power, trim. Oh dear me, let's get this right. One is one is the top of the climb. The other one is the bottom of the climb. So the bottom of the climb, you're going to put the power on, and then do the attitude and the trim. So that's the climb, isn't it? And then on the way. Um, and the other one is attitude power climb, climb uh, attitude power trim on the descent. So I'm going to cut the throttle back a bit though, because I don't really want. Um, I'm going to cut the power, so I don't want to go powering into the descent. So I've, there we are. So we put a thousand on the torque, and then we're going to go to a descent here, and we're going to descend at about. Um, you can you can actually just press descend, and it will put you down. And then I'll do an altitude select because, as I said before, that's the only way I've found out of um, leveling off at the right altitude. 
We've just done a slight left turn onto our next uh, leg. It's funny how the turns are always seem more. This is a 30 degree turn. You remember these markings are 10, 20, 30. It will always do a 30 degree turn, um, even if you don't need it to. Um, just because that's the standard turn in in aviation, um, which means that uh, it almost sort of slings it round the corner, and you think, oh, that was only a little left turn of 30 degrees. You could have done it over a minute or two, but no, 30 degree two, psh, round we go. Um, the standard turn on a plane, as you know, is a two-minute turn. So it's two minutes to turn through 360 degrees. So a 30-degree turn is a twelfth of a complete turn, so it will be a twelfth of two minutes. Two minutes is 120 seconds, and a twelfth of 120 seconds is 10 seconds. So you're going to take 10 seconds to turn 30 degrees. And that's pretty quick, isn't it? That's not a slow turn. It's... Um, if I remember correctly, you can it's print two minute turn on here. There we are. Two minute turn because when when one of these is aligned fully left or fully right, then you're turning at 30 degrees. And that's the same here as this is 30 degrees left. This is 45, 60, 30 degrees right, 45, 60. <coughs> I think that's right. I think that's when it's on there. We're turning right. No, we're turning right. No, I think that's a right turn. I think, I think that's when we turn. Let me just turn right and see which way it goes. Yeah, you see, when you turn right, it goes left. So that's that's if it's like that, you're turning right 30 degrees. Okay, that's a bit esoteric. Let's not go into that. Tango Charlie, don't know where that is. Good G W is not Goodwood. T K. No, I mean unfamiliar territory. I know this is Daventry. There are far fewer VORs, so you tend to know the VORs better than you do the airfields. Uh, there are some very funny airfields. So there are some very funny ways of remembering the airfields, like the two in Glasgow, Glasgow, uh, two in Scotland, Glasgow and Edinburgh. They won't forgive me for saying this, but um, uh, Edinburgh is um, is uh, sort of historically regarded as slightly more upmarket and, and above Glasgow, so. It's Echo Golf Papa Hotel, which um, is the abbreviation Posh Houses. All the airfields in Britain are EG, in the same way as all the all the airfields in Iceland, if you remember, were BI. Echo Golf means British airfield, and uh, then it's the only the only two letters afterwards that the change. So PH, Papa Hotel, Posh Houses. Mike Hotel, <coughs> I know because it was um, uh, my local airfield, lo local large airfield anyway, and Mike Charlie is um, South End, which again I know. Talking of which, we ought to set up ready for Charlie. The wind is still zero, 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 zero. There's only, um, I want to use the ILS on the runway 24 at uh, South End, even if it's a uh, uh, slight, slight tailwind. They have a um, non-directional beacon an NDB on the approach and it's 341 is it? Let me have a quick look. I've got the approach plate for um, Mike Charlie here. Transitional altitude is 6000. That's when we come off the QNH and go on to the QFE. 362 decimal 5 is the one that's on the airfield. I was hoping there was one on the approach. No, no. No. 362 decimal 5. Anyway, let's we'll tune into that so that we can. It's an additional navigation, isn't it? 3 uh, 62 Will it do a five? I don't think it will, you know. I don't think it will. No, it won't. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Oh well. We'll, we'll just have to forget that then. The um, entry, uh, the altitude that we're going to enter the Procedure at is um, 2,500 overhead. But there's no. Um, 
the ILS, I'm just looking at the ILS frequency. Um, looks like 111.35. What is it or not? No. Yeah, it must be. Yeah, one 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 three five. Well, it's in the right. Uh, it's in the right sort of range. Let's just push this and go over to the localizer frequencies, and we want one 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 three five. Double check and make that the active. Okay, we've got a message. Set our course to one twenty five. Well, okay. Well, perhaps we need to. Perhaps we don't. I'll go back to the main thing and just check everything. Um, the runway is runway 24. The actual bearing of the runway is the actual heading is 235. So what I'm going to do is set the course to 235 because that's jolly useful to us when we're on the approach to have it aligned with the runway gives you a very very good sort of general sense of where the runway is if you've got a big green arrow pointing towards it. And the other thing is a little trick I'll show you and that's how to get the heading bugger line really quickly with your direction and that's literally just to push the middle. Do you see that jump straight away to straight ahead? So if you want to very quickly steer it on the bug in a straight line push the heading bug, push the heading button and the plane will just fly in the direction that's it's pointing and straighten up and fly into that direction. Now, let's put the autopilot away for a second. Just check we're not over speeding on the descent. We're not. In fact we could probably go a little bit faster. We don't really want to take the wings off a plane in the descent, do you? We're doing 1200 feet per minute. Let's check the rate of descent. We are, we've got 10 minutes to go. We've got 15,000 feet and we're descending at 1,200 feet per minute. Look at that. So we're going to arrive overhead at 3,000 feet in 10 minutes. Whoa, what a fluke that was. Let me just burn myself with a bit more tomato soup. This is the mark of a confident pilot when you can drink soup on the descent. Mm. That's good, that's cooled down a bit now. <clears throat> so this this uh, red line here is telling us that we are on our flight plan. And in fact it's, it's um, also here, isn't it? Telling us that we're on our flight plan. Although I don't really find this useful, it does it does have the map on it. Although I tend to prefer one level of declutter so that it gets rid of all the waypoints and things. And you can adjust the range, if I remember correctly, somehow. No, it's a bit non-functional, that. Shame. They brought out some new clouds for um, X-Plane, and they look lovely. Old Frugal did a video on them. Personally, I'm not unhappy with these. This is... Clouds are just... You don't really want clouds. I don't know why I don't pay £30 for better clouds. I've got clouds. Clouds just stop you seeing what you need to see. And these are doing a perfectly good job of stopping me seeing what I need to see without spending £30 for some better quality uh, barriers to uh, to visibility. But no, I expect it is nice. It's nice to have lovely clouds. <clears throat> one of the one of the best flights I ever did was in a, in a light aircraft on a day when the the clouds were very very particular they were little ball fluffy clouds they were about 50 feet across and all like tiny little dumplings all floating around in the sky 
at about three or four thousand feet and I went up in this um, plane with my daughter and we we just flew through these clouds and uh, as we flew through the uh, effect uh, the lift effect uh, gave them made them roll round the wings so as we flew through them not only did we blow them to pieces but we actually we made them do little curls at the end because of the um, vortices that were being shed off the wings and we, we were flying around and watching these clouds all swirl around as we were flying through them absolutely magic day one of those experiences that you don't really um, anticipate or expect to have as a pilot and, and, and it's just magical when it happens completely unexpectedly and on a day I mean, I've never really seen clouds like that again not really ever looked up and thought oh, there's a load of dumplings flying around in the sky like, like it was that day I'm pulling back on the talk and uh, I don't as we get into the thicker air our airspeed's going to go up I don't, so I don't want to overspeed so um, and we're descending, we're doing fine. We're, I'm going to say that we've been cleared down to 3000 now, so let's just pull that right back. That's it, <clears throat> that 10 feet. I'm not going to get rid of that 10 feet, am I? What a nuisance. Let's get rid of that. <clears throat> we've got about 18 frames a second there, which is, for me, that's acceptable. I mean, anything less than 15, unacceptable. Um, but anything above 15, 25 is good, 15, 25 is good, 15 is uh, alright. I'm going to show you how to get rid of that and what you do is just go to um, settings, uh, data, input and output and then there are four categories for each data, set of data. So data can be um, input or output on, on, on any one of these four things and the last one is the um, screen so I'm just going to get rid of that. So in fact I don't really want to enable internet data output and I don't want to uh, enable disk file data input and output so by, by merely disabling those just press enter to get back we might get a slightly higher frame rate. <clears throat> now we're coming into South End from the west and we're going to want to come into it from the east if we're going to land at runway 24 so at some point we're going to have to go right over the top here you can see you start to see these more familiar SS Stansted, LC London City, LL London Heathrow, and underneath it GG London Gatwick. Um, so let's think about what procedure, setting up the procedure. So we're going to select the approach, and we want the ILS uh, 24, and let's say vectors for the time being. Uh, so that's the approach. About to IND 74, IND 44. What's the better than that? 7.4 nautical miles away. <coughs> the actual um, entry point is is um, overhead. I think for us we'll probably go overhead, and then we'll do the the standard teardrop fly out and round and back again. So this is really just for. Um, for information only really good yeah and we're only um, we're only 20 miles away so are we only 20 miles away no well, it could be I don't know why it's not going down though this is going down let's have a look at the uh, No. What should we load another? What should we load another flight plan? Just press clear. No, clear doesn't help. Holding and pressing down clear should reset the display, so that when you get into a panic like this, you don't have to panic. Oh, actually, I want to push. Get rid of the cursor. That's what I want to do. And then do a small left. And then get rid of the flight plan. And then do a small right. And then possibly zoom in a bit. Right, let's stay that way. Um, we could we could tune into the tower, couldn't we? Um, 
the waypoint, it would be on the waypoint page I think, here we are. <coughs> Approach is what we used to use, um, but I'll put the tower in, it won't really matter, we're not going to be using it. So 12772, shame it doesn't have the um, frequencies on here for the ILS. So one one two seven seven two. So do the big ones because that's easier. One two seven, and then the small one seven. Ooh, well seven two five. That's that's actually the same. So we'll put that up. We'll get rid of that. Here we can see the coast here. It's because Thames Estuary. This is good. This is what we should be seeing all this just going to pull back on the torque a bit because we are we've certainly made good progress on the way down haven't we what I'll do if we go to location and local map I'll need I'll be able to check that ILS frequency so let's just go across here we are Mike Charlie 11135 and in here it's 362 so one 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 three five three sixty two. So we've got one 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 three five set up, and this is actually set up as three sixty two, isn't it? Oh no, what it was. I just changed it. Three sixty two. Now, so if we pull back across here, we can put this on ADF one, and it'll point us towards South End. Good. I'm going to start cutting back even more on the speed now because um, we are busting the speed limit of 250 knots under 10,000 feet and because we're under 10,000 feet I'm going to put the landing lights on. There we are. So it's um, put your chairs upright, tray tables away, <coughs> rubbish in the bin. Finish your tomato soup. Let's just give this back to the stewardess. Jolly good. Now again, you see how that green arrow pointing back is a good, is useful, isn't it? <clears throat> what we're going to do? We're going to fly towards South End. So let's. We're going to go start flying on the bug now. So synchronize, heading. And we're now flying on the bug. We are as soon as we turn this GPS off, because I think this... There we are. We're now flying on the bug. So we should level off at 3,000 feet, so watch out for that. Now, we're slightly over to the left. I'm going to put this up here so you can follow what I'm doing. I'm going to... Pull the bug slightly left so it follows the non-directional beacon. There's the airfield here. Can you see that? So we're going to fly straight over it. And then as soon as we fly over it, we're going to turn onto a heading of 045. So our heading at the moment is uh, 97097. We want 045 because that's the outbound arm of the teardrop. So watch this yellow arrow because in a minute it's going to go backwards. And as soon as it goes backwards we've got to bash this round to 045 which will be left, won't it? Now we've got no distance information on here so we can't anticipate. I, I mean, obviously, I know roughly where the airfield is. So um, I know I know pretty much when to expand. I know it's not going to happen in twenty minutes, but you you still have to watch it, and it's going to whip round pretty quick because because we're going. You see that jump there? Just because we I think we just picked up the ILS. Now watch. Now, whoa! There it goes. Whoa! <laughs> so let's. That was quick, wasn't it? Oh. Let's get that round to zero four five. Now the plane's in a left-hand turn. We've got a beep 
from the altimeter which is good because it means that we're leveling off at 3000 and not a minute too soon because we're still whipping along at a quick old rate aren't we so now we're leveling off I'm going to expect the airspeed to drop off because I'm not going to add any power in at the moment I'll add some power in when we when we slow down and then what we want to do is we we have to go out to nine miles now there's a couple of ways of measuring nine miles one is that you can use the highly sophisticated measuring equipment here which gives us um, how many nautical miles we are away and the other way of doing it is doing it just by working out how fast you're going and <clears throat> if you can imagine we're going 220 knots over the ground which is about three miles a minute so we'll be out we'll be there in about 20 seconds or so no 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 three miles a minute so we'll be there in about three minutes or so won't we or less so let's say we're going to be there in two minutes right now what we're going to do we're going to see if we can set the stopwatch there we are to two minutes on the chronometer so you watch that while I watch the rest of this stuff we're still not slowing down I'm going to slow I'm going to, to just take us down to about 800 on the torque because this is just ridiculous speed for, for an approach they're probably watching us in the control going what the who does this guy think he is? The red arrows? <clears throat> now we should, that should be pointing directly backwards which tells me that we need to turn slightly right so I'm going to turn slightly right because we literally should be flying directly away from that in fact that's probably not the, not the correct corrective action in a way. I'll put that back on 45. Um, we've better, now if we're flying 45 and it's pointing slightly to the left it means that the plane has drifted slightly to the right so in fact we need to we need to steer slightly to the left. There we are look at that. So I'm going to put it down to 41. Now was that two minutes? Are you watching the clock? 123 too early. Now we're still not going slowly enough, so I'm going to cut the speed back even more. And as soon as uh, well, we can drop one load of flaps now. So let's um, let's put some flaps down. There we are. Now I might need to start feeding some throttle in just to stop it complaining. Now that's about, we're coming up for two minutes now aren't we, so let's have a look across here and see how, how well we judged that on the distance. 10.8, we're a bit long aren't we? So okay, not to worry. So now is the time to turn around and start flying back to the runway. So the way we do that is drag the, drag the heading round, drag the heading round, drag the heading round. Now, you'll see here, we've picked up the ILS, there's the centre line, there's the glide slope. We're below the glide slope, which is correct, you always intercept glide slopes from below. The centre line is coming round, we're turning left, the centre line is to the left, and so it's coming towards us. <clears throat> you can see that the needle's centering here, which shows that we're acquiring the, the centre line, in fact we're probably going to fly through it because we're still going across it and, and we're already on it so what I'm going to do now we now now need to fly slightly to the right of the runway so I'm going to drag the heading bug over to the the other side of the needle and see the other side of the arrows this is where you need to have the heading bug on the approach somewhere between the green line and the head of the arrow somewhere in the middle there if you're a long way off the center line then nearer to the right if you're if you're you know you're pretty happy then somewhere nearer the arrow but here um, I want to regain the center line so I'm just showing you how to fly it manually don't worry we can't see the airfield yet keep an eye on the glide slope keep an eye on the airspeed oh my god I'd love to know if this plane is as forgiving because this seems to stop just above the stall unless you know you're literally landing it see the centre line coming back, you see it coming back here, you see it coming back here 
So with the heading bug, I'm going to drag that around a bit now because we're acquiring, we're reacquiring the center line, aren't we? I want about 120 knots here. We're still below the glide slope, which is not surprising because we should have descended to about 2,000 feet. In fact, we can descend to 2,000 feet. And what I'll do is I'll put in a descent. Uh, oh no, I didn't know. What you've got to do is obviously you've got to put it down to 2,000 feet and then put it in a descent. And then press altitude select to make sure it stops at 2,000 feet. So what I'm doing here, I'm sort of flying um, I'm all flying a, a an approach, but I'm doing it on the bug and on the autopilot rather than what I could do is I could just press um, approach and the autopilot would do all of this. I'm just showing that how it could be done, how it can be done manually. I'm going to throttle back a bit as well. You don't put the gear down until you've intercepted the glide slope, and we're still below the glide slope, so I'm not going to put the gear down at the moment. I am keeping my hand on the throttle because I want to keep this at about 120 knots. That's complaining I haven't put the gear down. Just ignore that. So here we are. So this is good. This is pointing straight up. So we're flying back to South End. We're reacquiring the centre line. Probably not quite as fast as I'd like. I'm going to move that slightly further to the left. I'm deliberately not looking at the runway, so I don't really want to know at the moment how well I'm doing. I'm just assuming I'm doing well. <laughs> Always good to assume you're doing well. We're, because we're in the descent, I'm going to find the props. So we'll just push those props forwards, like that. And keep an idea, keep an eye on what that's doing to the air. That's why it was beeping, I think. We hadn't found the props, and so um, we had too little torque on because the propellers were too coarse. So remind me, next time we land, if the thing's beeping for the gear down and I don't think the gear should be down at this point it's probably because I've forgot to find the props. So we are not doing too bad at reacquiring the centre line aren't we and, and you can see that the glide slope's coming down now. So as soon as, so now now we're pretty well set up on the approach so now will be a good time to press approach and see what it does. What's it doing? Let's just cut the throttle back a bit. So it's saying that um, we probably should be descending round about now to it's intercept the, the glide slope's coming down steeply so it's put itself in a shallow descent and it's starting to do a bit of fiddling about left and right to acquire the centre line and it does a better job of it than I do so happy to leave it. Um, and we're descending now on the glide slope so um, we'll put that down. Now, you notice that it was on the autopilot and we had it in a descent and an altitude select and everything, but when we pressed approach, it started descending on its own, so don't worry if you've got it holding an altitude, it will it will forget that altitude. As soon as it realises it's on a glide slope, anything that you've put in about stay at this level, blah, 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 all this set altitude, don't descend below 2,000 feet, blah, 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 that's all out the window. The plane knows best on the approach and it will it'll cancel any constraints that you've put in. So let's put the um, second degree of flap down and again watch the airspeed make sure it stays up. Don't forget the lag on the um, on the engines. Now we I'm going to put the uh, 229.97 in on the uh, Q&H. I should have done that at 6000 feet. But that should give us uh, that that should give the plane because the plane doesn't know how high it is. Don't forget that. Okay. It does to a certain extent it does with the the radio uh, the radar altitude you can see the radar altitude there um there I see the radar altitude going down so so it does but this is really not that brainy um oh look, there's decision height there as well that's good so the decision height to 250 feet i don't know what it is but it'd be useful to see what it does wouldn't it and here we've got the distance here, which is and um, which is which is jolly useful for um, when you're, we are literally in cloud. Now, let me give the game away a bit, but there's the runway there. And you know, again, in cloud, possibly wouldn't see it. If we had a 300 foot cloud base, we still wouldn't be seeing that. But you can see how nicely that set that is set up. On, and we've done that. We've done that all on instruments. 
It shouted 500 on the radar and we've just gone through 500 on the, the uh, pressure altimeter so again that's good. We're, we're, we're nicely set up. So everything's fine. Brakes are off, undercarriage is down and locked. We've got three greens. Mixtures rich. Yes, prop fuel. Fine. We got that's minimum. Did you? It's minimum three. That's a new thing, isn't it? I haven't done, done that before. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take it off the autopilot, correct its slight tendency to go to the left. Now just fly the plane down onto the runway. Do not try and float. Just down you go. Pull the throttle back when you're. No, that was a terrible landing. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Flaps up. We're lucky we got away with that because that was a three-point landing. If, if uh, not worse, and we quite possibly came down on the nose wheel there and, and ballooned. So, anyway, okay. Still. I'm going to fall back on that old pilot saying about any landing that you survive is a good landing. <laughs> Mind you, this is our third plane. There's <laughs> two of them. Two of them at least the plane didn't survive. You vacate left normally from a runway and that's again because the pilot sits on the left. So that's where you've got the best view. And. Uh, the runway, actually I might have an excuse for that landing because the runway at South End is small. It's actually, compared to most large runways, it's actually smaller than than uh, than most of the, run the other runways and um, that uh, has a couple of effects and one of them is that it makes you think that you are higher than you think you are when, when in fact you're lower um, and the runway is just smaller and it's closer. <laughs> So no, there we go. So what I'll do is I'll um, I'm going to leave it here. I'll just put the parking brake on because we didn't put the parking brake on. Did we at Reykjavik and nearly ran into a hangar? That could have been expensive. So anyway, thanks for uh, joining me on the flight and uh, I'm pleased to say we got down in one piece and pretty expeditiously as well. Sorry we had to split it into two um, two parts but then these flights are just long flights um, I hope you're enjoying them anyway and please do give me plenty of feedback and uh, let me know um, you know what if anything you'd like to see so um, I'll uh, shut the plane down and uh, I hope to see you next time Do it, is it?